Hello guys, welcome to the mathematics lesson. This is the mathematics lesson 8. So in today's lesson, we'll be looking at quadratic equations. So today we'll be looking at quadratic equations. So what is a quadratic equation? So a quadratic equation is a quadratic expression with an equal sign in it. So you see, in other lessons, we looked at the quadratic expressions. And today we are looking at solving quadratic equations. And what we are saying is that a quadratic equation is a quadratic expression with an equal sign in it. And the, an example of a quadratic equation is ax plus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. So such an, ex, uh, an expression like this one is called a quadratic e equation. All right, so uh, solving a quadratic equation involves finding the roots of the quadratic e equation. So whenever we are solving a quadratic equation, our aim is to find the roots of a quadratic e equation. So quadratic equations we will always have two roots which may be equal. So it will have two roots which may be equal. All right, so there are three methods to solve quadratic equations. So there are three methods to solve quadratic equations. So we have one, the first method called factorization method. Another one called completing the square method then we have also another one called the formula method. So in today's lesson, we'll, be, we'll look at the three of them. All right, so let's start with the factorization method. All right, so uh, a factorization method involves factorizing the equation to give two expressions in brackets. So whenever we are factorizing a quadratic equation, then it involves us um, factorizing the equation to give two expressions in brackets. All right, so then solving for an unknown variable of the two expressions. So when we come up with the expressions in the variable, then we solve for the unknown expressions or unknown variables. All right, so let's look at an example here. So here we are told to solve the following quadratic e equations. Sorry for putting quadratic expressions here. It is supposed to be quadratic e equations. So we have number one, a x squared minus 5x is equal to zero. Then we have also b x c squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. So let's solve these quadratic equations using factorization method, the method that we looked at in factorizing quadratic expressions. All right, so we'll begin with A here, where we have A squared minus 5x is equal to 0. So when we look at this um, terms on the left side of the equal sign, they have the common term which is xc here. So xc is common between these two terms and therefore x is going to be factorized here. We we'll have xc factored out, then we'll remain with 1x. So we'll open bracket, here we'll remain with just x, then minus, then here if x is factored out, then we'll remain with 5, then we close the bracket, then equal to 0. So at this point, you should notice that we have come up with two factors. One inside the brackets, another one outside the bracket. So these are two products. So what this basically means is that um, uh, the multiplication of x with what is inside the bracket is what gives you zero. So that simply means 
if we are getting zero after multiplying x with what is inside the brackets, then either x is zero or the expression inside the brackets is zero. So what we are going to do here is to sum. Uh, for us to get zero after multiplying x with what is in the brackets, uh, it means that either x is equal to zero or uh, x minus 5 is equal to 0. All right, so this one now cannot be solved further, but this expression now can be solved further, just as we stated here that then solving for unknown variables of the two expressions. So we came up with this x and that. This one has solved directly to 0, but this one is yet to be solved because we don't know what x is here we have been told if x times this expression inside the brackets gives us zero then it we said it is either x is zero or this expression is zero but so we have to equate either x is equal to zero or this is zero but here it is very clear that x is zero this one let's see what is there so here now we have x minus 5 is equal to 0. So make x the subject of the formula. So uh, we'll collect like terms. So 5 will go on the other side where there's a number and then it becomes a positive. So we have x here. Uh, we squeeze, we have x is equal to um, 0. Then this one, when it, it crosses, it becomes positive 5. All right. Then we'll say x is equal to 0 plus 5, which will be 5. So then it means that uh, x is either 0 or x is either 5. All right? So this is how we solve a quadratic equation. And usually a quadratic equation will have two roots, and these are the roots of the quadratic equation. x is equal to 0 or x is equal to Five. All right, so let's look at the example B here where we have x squared minus 3x plus c2 is equal to 0. So such a quadratic equation involves finding first the product and then the sum and then the factors so that we factorize this expression very well. So We'll start with finding the product. So the product is uh, found by multiplying the coefficient of x squared. So x squared has got a no number in front of it. That means it has a coefficient of 1. So coefficient of 1 here times c, the constant 2. So 2 is a constant. Remember when we started looking at algebraic expression, we said numbers are constant. So you multiply the coefficient of x squared, which is 1, with the, the constant, which is 2. So 1 times 2 gives us what we call the product, which will be actually 2. Then the sum. We need also to find the sum. And the sum is the coefficient of this x, this one here. So this x, its coefficient is minus 3. So minus 3 is the coefficient of x. And then we need also to find the factors. So we'll say factors are equal to. So what are these factors? Factors are two numbers that we have to look for, which when we multiply them, they'll give us the product, which is two. And then we add them, they'll give us the sum, which is negative three. So which two numbers can we take that when multiplied with each other we get two and when more and added with each other we get negative three so these are negative one and negative two so eg if we get negative uh to to prove that this one actually gives us the product two if we get negative one times c uh negative two what are we going to get so we are going to get uh, we'll say negative times negative positive, then 1 times 2 will get 2. So definitely multiplying these two factors like we have done, uh, it is giving us the product 2. Let's try adding them if it will give us the sum here. So we'll say the sum 
let's say we have negative <coughs> excuse me we have negative 1 plus negative 2 then we we'll say negative I mean positive negative will get it uh, negative so we have negative 1 negative 2 equals so since the two numbers here have got it both negative sign so it means we have to add them and then keep the sign they have so we'll say one plus two which will be three and then since they have the sign of both of them then the number three will have the negative three which proves our sum here is negative three so hence we have found the correct factors so these factors once they have been found then they substitute this expression in the middle here. So it is as good as for us to be able to get a negative 3x, it is as good as saying uh, this negative 1, we take it as negative x minus, then this negative 2, we take it as negative 2x. So if we have negative 2x like this, what I mean is this here so that you don't get actually confused of what I'm talking about here. So what I'm trying to say is that if this one is tend to be negative x, all right, uh, negative x, take this one as x, and this one is tend as in negative 2x, then equals this x equals here then it will give us negative 3x so this is negative 3x which is actually this one so it means that negative 3x can be substituted with these so meaning where there's negative 3x we can substitute this so we'll say okay we'll have uh, x squared, where we have negative 3x, we'll substitute with this, where we have uh, negative x, then negative 2x, then we'll put this plus 2 equals 0. Then now we are going to factorize by grouping terms. So factorize this one here, and also this one here. So same. Uh, this implies that uh, we'll look for factors here, common factor between these two is actually um, x. So here we have x, then here will remain with the x, so open bracket will remain with x, then minus. Here once x has been factored out, will remain with 1, then we'll close the brackets, then we'll put this one here. So also factorize this one and this one here. So notice that we have 2 and here we have 2. So we'll factor this one as negative 2 as being common, and then here will remain with x, all right? Then here we'll say uh, minus, minus, so that, um, you know, for you to put, uh, why I'm putting minus here is that it, whatever I'm factorizing, when expanded back, it should get me back to what? To where it came from. For instance, uh, if I say negative 2 times x, it should get me to negative 2x. So here, I am supposed to put plus, but then it will not take me back to plus here. So I have to put now minus, so that if I say negative 2 times, I say negative, negative, I get positive. That's why I'm putting negative here. Then here, once I've factored out 2, I'll remain with 1. Then close bracket, then equals uh, 0, all right? So now, this expression here again can be factorized further. Because you notice that this, um, uh, we have an expression uh, on the left of this minus here, where we have this expression in the brackets, similar to... Uh, after minus here, we have this expression here, and we have also minus what? Minus C, uh, I mean X minus 1 in the brackets. So these are common. So we'll factor them out. So we'll write minus X, X minus 1, close brackets. So factor out this one. 
and on this side will remain with open bracket so now we'll put this one x then this side will remain with negative 2 in brackets like that then we'll say equals 0 so now for us to get to 0 since we are multiplying this expression with this expression so it means that if this expression and this expression they are multiplied then the product will be 0 so for you to get uh, 0 it is either this one is 0 or this one is 0 or both are zeros for us to get this 0 so because of that situation we will now use it to find the unknown variables x here so say equals or we'll pick this one and the same it is either x minus 1 is equal to 0 or this one here x minus 2 is equal to 0 then we'll say equals then here we'll make um, we'll collect like terms where this one will cross to the other number here on the right side of the equal sign so we'll have x is equal to uh, 0 then this one when it crosses it becomes positive 1 or we'll send here x is equal to then 0 when two negative 2 crosses becomes positive 2 then we'll say uh, this implies that uh, x is equal to 0 plus 1 which will be 1 or we'll say x is equal to 0 plus 2 which will be so this will be our answers, the two roots that satisfies this quadratic expression. Alright, so let's look at uh, C. C we have 3x squared minus x minus 10 is equal to 0. So as usual, we'll look for product uh, where we'll say product is actually the coefficient of x squared. In this case, we have a 3 times this constant in this case we have negative 10 so 3 times negative 10 which would be negative 30 then we we'll also look for the sum so sum is the coefficient of x here so here the coefficient of x is negative 1 because in front of x there's a number 1 which they have not written and that one has got this negative being shown here so negative 1 then the sum uh, I mean the factors should be two numbers which when you multiply them they will give you negative 30 when you add them they will give you negative 1 these are negative I mean positive 5 and the negative uh, 6 e.g. for the product let's prove if we multiply 5 times uh, negative 6 are we getting 30 negative 30 that's true let's uh, prove also for the sum if we say sum we get 5 plus negative 6 what are we getting so here we'll say 5 now positive negative which will be negative then we'll say equals so these are two opposite sign 5 is positive 6 is negative so what we do if the signs are opposite it is to subtract the smaller number from the large number and then keep the sign on the final answer of the bigger number so we'll say 6 minus 5 which will be 1 and then since 6 has got a negative that final answer should follow also with negative so we have negative 1 so it is true the sum is negative 1 the product is negative 30 hence these are the factors which when we multiply can give us negative 30 when we add them can give us negative 1 so hence we are going to substitute this so this one can be substituted by this way so meaning that here if we have 5x 5x minus 6x what are we going to get? We are going to get 5x minus 6x. It is as good as saying 6x minus 5x where we we'll have x. Then since uh, 
negative x, I mean this 6x is a bigger number which has a negative, even the final answer must have negative. So you see, what it means here is that this is giving us negative uh, x, which is this one here. So it means negative x here now can be substituted by this. All right, so substitute will say uh, equals 3x where there's the x here, negative x will put uh, positive 5x minus 6x, then minus 10 equals 0. Then I'll factor out these two here and also these two here. So say the factor, the what is common between 3x squared and 5x squared is actually x. Then here will remain with the uh, 3x, then plus, then here will remain with the 5, we'll close bracket, then we'll come to this side, negative 6x minus 10. What is common here? It is 2. 2 can go into negative 6 and it can go also into negative 10. So the common one is negative 2 here. So once we factor out negative 2 here, we'll remain with it. Uh, 3x, then here we have, or we'll remain with it, plus, um, what is this one, uh, 5, close, is equal to 0. So here, uh, if we multiply negative 2 times 3x, we'll get negative 6x. Again, if we multiply negative 2 times C, positive 5, we'll get negative 10. So whatever you put here must be able to get you back to where to where the factors are coming from. Now from here now you check. You have minus here and on the left side here you have this expression in the brackets and after minus here on the right side here you have this expression in the bracket which is 3x plus 5 which is common. Hence you factor it out you get it first. Uh, 3x plus 5 cross bracket then here you remain with x so you open bracket x then here negative 2 close bracket equals to 0 so again just as we said for us to get 0 here from the multiplication of this expression and this expression then it means either this expression is 0 or this expression is 0 or both of these expressions are zero. So what we are going to do is to say uh, 3x plus 5 is zero or uh, x minus 2 is equal to zero. Then from there, we'll find x here. So first of all, we'll collect like terms. 5 will follow where the other number is. So we'll have 3x equals 0 minus 5 because 5 when it crosses it to become minus then here we have x is equal to 0 this crosses becomes positive 2 then we'll say equals then here we need to divide by 3 to remain with x or first we'll say 3x yeah yeah of course i did it quickly so yeah we'll divide by 3 to remain with x here we'll say 0 minus 5, which will be minus 5. Then that minus 5 divided by 3 here. So I did it quickly because we have already covered these things eh, on how to do them. Then here what we are going to do is <coughs> um, add. So we'll say or x is equal to uh, 0 plus 2, which will be 2. So... This one now will simplify it further. We will say x is equal to 3 into 5 is 1, remainder 2 over 3. Or here our answer will be x is equal to 2. So this is how we solve quadratic equation using factorization. So factorization cannot be used to factorize all types of quadratic equations. So next we have to look at uh, the completing of uh, the square method, completing the square method. So we are saying that uh, this method involves making the left side of 
a quadratic equation into a perfect square the form like this x plus a close brackets to power 2 this method can be used to solve any quadratic equation so this method can be used to solve any quadratic equation unlike the other one which can solve certain quadratic equations and not all the quadratic equation all right so let us look at example one so that we learn how to use the completion of square method example two here so we have this question which says <coughs> uh, which says uh, <coughs> solve each of the following equations by completing the square so we have uh, a x squared minus 2x <coughs> excuse me i have a cough so so x squared minus 2x minus 5 i mean 15 is equal to 0 then b we have 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 is equal to 0 then c we have um, x squared plus 5x minus 10 is equal to 0 all right so let's start with it a solution for a here so now when completing the square method using the complete square method first we are going to collect like terms together so here we have negative 15 here we have 0 so negative 15 is a number as well as 0 or just like 0 so it will cross on the left side or right side of the equal sign so that it becomes positive 15 so positive 15 plus 0 it will be actually 15 so here we have now we remain with uh, x squared minus 2x is equal to 15 because this one when it crosses it becomes 15 15 plus 0 0 so i haven't shown those steps because as you advance in solving you learn to skip those steps because we are just shown to you to know that these steps exist but they can also be skipped if we know that when we cross this 15 here it will be positive 15 positive 15 plus 0 it will be just a 0 so it's not necessarily that you need to show all the steps because i only show the steps when i'm teaching people that are learning these things but for myself i don't show those steps because these are the major steps from here the second step is here then what is supposed to be done here it is to check the coefficient of x squared so if the coefficient of x squared is one then you proceed to the next in this case it is one so we'll proceed to this coefficient of this other x here so the coefficient of this x is negative two so accordingly what we are supposed to do is to get this two here uh, two negative two here divided by what by two again you have it so it means you divide it by two that's the rule and then what do you get you get negative one then this negative one again you square it after you square it you add it to both sides of the equation you add it on this side and also on this side so here we'll get x squared minus 2x then we'll get this one and add it here plus uh, open brackets negative 1 close brackets to power 2 equals 15 then also we'll add the same one here right then after we have done that then we are going to pick this one x minus one that's how it works so follow don't ask why is it like that you are going to make your learning curve too long just follow these steps because people have already done it because they have proved that if we expand this and this we can still get negative 2x that's why here they will just get x minus one to power two like this x minus one close bracket to power two so we have gotten this x since it has a power and this one has a power so since there's a minus here we we'll get this x which has a power just write it x then this minus comes here this one since it has a power then just get one and then power 
share it by this you leave this one because this one if we expand it it is proven that it can give us the whole of this one so meaning the whole of this one means just this one so then equals um you get 15 then you say negative 1 to power 2 it will be actually positive 1 all right so then from here what you are going to do is to make sure that you get rid of this square here square all right so you say this one is equal to you add this 15 plus 1 which will be 16 then you get rid of this so say okay equals this is 16 then to get rid of this square you use a square root so you multiply by a square root and also here you multiply by square root here when you multiply by a square root here so here you also put this sign positive or negative so this square root and this square here they cancel each other you remain with the, uh, x minus 1 equals then positive or negative then 16 squared it will be 4 so this plus or negative it means this 16 here can be gotten by multiplying uh, positive time positive 4 times positive 4 can still give you uh, negative i mean 16 or negative 4 times negative 4 can still give you uh, 16 then from here what you are going to do is to pick two things here so you say uh, you make x uh, the subject of the formula so that this one crosses on the other side to follow where the number is the other number is which is a 4 so it will be equals plus or negative 4 then this one when it crosses it becomes a positive 1 all right so from there what we are going to do is to say that um, uh, x is equal to so here now there are two conditions to be followed so you have to follow uh, you have to pick uh, this 4 with a positive first you say like uh, 4 which is positive I haven't written the sign because it is still positive whether I add positive or not it means it, it is positive this 4 so I'll pick positive 4 first then plus 1 and say or then I'll say x is equal to then I'll pick the negative 4 negative 4 plus 1 then I'll say x is equal to 4 plus 1 5 or then I'll say x is equal to uh, 4 negative 4 plus 1 which would be negative 3 all right so we have solved the first one like this that's how it is solved so let us look at the b so b here which is this one says 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 is equal to 0 again we'll make this one across the other side so it will become negative 3 so same uh, 2x squared plus 7x is equal to negative 3 then we'll get this two since this x is has a coefficient of two so we are to cancel two here so that this x must always be x without a number here so for us to get rid of these two we must divide everything here by two so here we have uh, this one two x squared minus two so that we they cancel out then plus then here we have seven x minus seven x divided by 2 also so that that's how we do whenever you divide here by 2 everywhere you should do the same because then this one will be negative 3 divided by 2 then from here this will cancel this 2 and this 2 will cancel then here will remain with just x squared plus 7x over 2 is equal to negative 3 over 2 then from there now what you are going to do is to get the half of this half of uh, this coefficient 7 over 2 so we said half of this one now is going to be um, 
actually seven uh, i never showed here seven over two so half of it is you just multiply by one over two that is half of it which will give you still seven over four i'm sure they are that's what i did so which will be the half of this one so you say uh, which we should do square again when we square it then add it to both sides of the equation this side on the left of the equal sign and also on the right so say plus uh, 7x over 2 then we'll add the same one here now which is uh, the half i think this is half oh i didn't do it properly here let me see so equals squared then that one like that i made an error here it should have been four here so here we need to have four like this one then also here the same two over four here so that then, now we are going to pick x then here it is still four here we are still having four then uh, squared we have picked this and this one here so you just pick x once then this uh, 7 over 4 here 7 over 4 once to power 2 then equals then here you say um, 3 over uh, 2 here then here you say plus then you say 7 squared which is uh, 49 then here 4 squared which is supposed to be 16 here from here now you say this one you pick is as it is so take it as over 4 here is equal to uh, then this one you add fraction remember i told you how to add fraction so you when you add fraction you are going to arrive at this one here i've already taught how to add fractions so that's why we learned how to add fractions so that you'll be able to solve questions involving fractions because if you don't know fractions then you say let me jump to to solve bigger questions you won't manage because those bigger questions will need at some point fractions to be solved so you have this one here then what you are going to do here is that eh, now this one will come a bit here let me clean this one so this one now comes here where we have x to power 2 then is equal to this one so square root to get the square uh, there even here we square root so here we remain with it we'll introduce that then here we remain with it uh, x plus 1 over 4 is equal to then here square root of uh, 25 which is uh, 5 square root of 16 which is 4 so we have 5 over 4 then what we'll do now we'll make x the subject of the formula so this will go to the other side so say x is equal to plus so we are picking first eh? one thing that we are picking so we are first picking uh, the negative of this one. So say negative 5 over x first, then that will be minus 7 over 4. Then O will get a positive. Again, positive. We we'll say x is equal to positive of this value here. Uh, minus 7 over 4 which is going to be equals so the co you add again so the common denominator will be four so here you will remain with three because you are going to, so if a common denominator is four then i'll say four into four one one times five negative five then here again four four times that one negative 
7. Alright, so negative 7 is going to give me negative 12. Negative 12 over 4. 4 into negative 12, which will be negative 3. Alright, so this is how this negative 3 was fine. Okay, so here we are safe. Then equally here the answer was found to be when you add this one the answer will be uh, negative one over two so this is how you solve this quadratic e equation here so let's do c here hopefully c has got no errors so c here again this will pass here to positive 10 so we'll have this x squared plus 5 x c is equal to 10 yeah so get the x5 here divide it by 2 and square so we have 5 over 2 then we'll square this one all right so get x squared plus 5x then we'll add the square of this one when we square it like this we'll add it here then we'll say equals also 10 plus the same one here all right so what we are going to do is to pick x now plus 5 over 2 squared. So say x plus 5 over 2 squared then equals 10 plus then we'll say 5 to power uh, 2 which will be 25 and then 2 to power 4 I mean 2 which will be 4. Then from there uh, you are going to now square root or oh, first to we'll add this one. I did it so fast. My animation again here did not move well, but what we did here is to just add 10 plus 25 over 4. So you add this is a fraction, this is not a fraction. So make this one also a fraction. So common denominator is 4. Because 4 can go into 4, 1 can go into 1. So 1 into 4, which will go how many times there? 4, 4 times 10, 40. Plus 4 into 4, 1, 1 times 25, which will be 25. So this one will go like this. 40 plus 25, which will be 65 over 4. This is how this was found here. Then now you add it to you have to square now. To get this square root here, you square and then you square on both sides. So that yeah, that's what we did. Then here now what you do now, you remain with uh, that one is introduced as well. Then here you remain with this when you square this square. Uh, square and this square root will cancel you remain with this equals then plus or negative then you get a uh, four squared which will be two then 65 will say 65 will remain with a square there over two then this one has to move somewhere there so let me rub these so this one has to move there where we are shifting where we are saying here we have x plus. Oh, so this one now is now going that way. Alright, so we'll say x is equal to now this one. So we are going to square root 65, which will give us 8.062 according to three decimal places over 2, which is this one. Then this one will cross the other side to become minus 5 over 2. Then from there, we'll have x will either equals, so we'll choose positive first, we'll pick this one and this one, uh, because we have positive or plus, uh, I mean positive or minus, so we'll get this one first. So say this one with a minus here, then minus that, or x is equal to, first we'll get this one with a positive now, then minus that. 
when you evaluate these fractions here, you arrive at x is equal to uh, negative 6, um, 0.53 or uh, x is equal to 1.53. All right, so the manipulation of this one is actually simple. Let me just do it in case you are worried and then you are worried you don't know how to do it. So you just say uh, like uh, negative 8. Okay, you just first get it. Uh, the common denominator here. 2, 2. Common denominator is 2. So you say 2 into 2, 1. 1 times negative 8.062. It will be the same negative uh, 8.062. Then there's minus here, minus there. Then again, this 2 into this one. 1, 1 times 5, 5. Then what you are going to do, minus, minus, it means you need to add. So it means you need to say, let me just do it for you. Uh, you need to say, using this calculator here, you need to say uh, 8 negative, oh, sorry, sorry. so 8.062 minus, minus here then minus uh, 5 equals that 13.062 then divided by 2 here so you get what this one negative 6.53 which is this one negative 6.53 I just decided to write to two decimal points here or places then this one as well, it's the same thing where you, you, you say you get the same common denominator which is 2, you say 2 into 2, 1, 1 times 8.062, you get 8.062. Minus 2 into 2, 1, 1 times 5, 5. Then here now you same. Let me pick a calculator as well. So here what you are going to say you same. Uh, 8.062 plus 5 equals. Oh, sorry. It is now minus here. Okay, it's minus. So we are saying 8.062 minus 5 equals, then it divided by 2 equals 1.53, which I also gave to two decimal places or points to 1.3. So that's how it is. Uh, done there so that uh, you move on with the clear understanding so now from here let's move to another method of solving a quadratic expression which is uh, uh, the completing the squares all right so uh, actually the video has become long so we are going to do this in the next video so as for now Bye and see you in my next video.